What's up guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to Season 5 of Division 1 of the Pokemon Premier League. Now, it's a bit ridiculous, the fact that we've gone on to our 5th season uh, is, is pretty good, and the fact we've also remained in Division 1, we've managed to avoid that relegation for 3 seasons now. Um, we've got something to live up to now. Uh, in case you guys haven't seen, obviously we've got a lot of new coaches uh, in and around the season, so uh, I think our main objective is to try and remain in Division 1. I'm um, feeling quite good about draft, as you can see the team on the front page. We've got Mega Beedrill, we've got, uh, well, doing Mega Beedrill things. Uh, we've got Fizz Death, Togekiss, Specially Defense, Gastrodon, um, the Phytinium Z, uh, Infernape, the Assault Vest Gudra, and a Life Orb Modest Offensive uh, Necrozma. Uh, quick overlook at uh, Jack's team. This is Electric Storm 252 promoted from Division 2 last season. Um, we have got the Scizor, um, which I very much expect for Beedrill. Tauros to be Scarfed, I expected. Um, Helis could also potentially be a Scarfer, Latios, Ninetales, and Sil Valley. So God knows what you know sort of Sil Valley that will be. Um, let's not beat around the bush though. We're going to get straight into this battle. Um, Jack is going to issue a challenge. Uh, first game of the season is uh, always a scary one. Pretty much the same as every other PPL game. But we're going to get straight into this. My safest lead is Beedrill because I outspeed pretty much everything on his team. Yeah, isn't Scarfed. Um, I have enough EVs to outspeed Scarf Bulu and Scarf uh, Heatran, of which he didn't bring either. And I have seriously prepped for the Heatran and Bulu core, and he didn't bring either, which really hampered my team from the get-go. Because if I had of uh, built some, uh, you know, if I hadn't have brought as much coverage as I did for these, uh, for Bulu and uh, Heatran, uh, game uh, game could have gone a bit differently. But we're gonna start by you turning out. We find out this is a very defensive Sizzle, which I expected. Um, and it has got the uh, Rocky Helmet. Now, Gastrodon takes this thing on pretty well, especially if it's defensive. I am especially defensive because it's the best thing I had for something like Heliolisk. Um, but I decided to bring this thing in. Togekiss can't really come in safely against that thing. Um, however, I should have probably expected a U-turn because he probably wouldn't have wanted to stay in because uh, I could get the initiative. So, um, I don't know what this uh, Latios is going to do. I know Latios obviously gets Energy Ball. He could have Bloom Doom. Um, he could just have normal energy ball to do a lot of damage. So I figured my safer switch at this point is going to be Tokus because he's having to have Psy Shock. I am defensive. He gets a crit there, early game crit. Doesn't even do over half, um, which kind of indicates he's some kind of bulky set. Uh, so I fought at the time. Um, he's not going to want to stay in here. I could do all kinds of things. I could paralyze him. I could uh, click uh, Dazzling Gleam to get us some huge damage. So he makes a safe play and goes into his Nine Tails. Obviously resisting the, uh, resisting the fairy stab. I'm going to click roost. Excuse me, I just had the inner burping all over the place. I'm going to click roost because I want to get this thing back up to uh, as full health as possible. Because it is my best thing to deal with uh, the Latios on the other team. Because that thing ruins me. Um, he decides to go for a toxic here. Um, I didn't really know what to expect from Ninetales. He obviously bought it expecting Kartana to come. Um, Kartana, in, in hindsight, maybe would have been better than Beedrill, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to click Thunder Wave, though, which is very nice. Obviously, I now outspeed it with uh, outspeed this thing with Necrozma. I have no speed investment, so it guarantees me to outspeed this thing, um, which is nice. Uh, I'm going to switch out because I don't want to take a fire move uh, at all. I'm going to go into Gudra because it's pretty safe switching this thing. I'm a Salt Vest. Uh, resist his stab, but he decides to pull a switch as well, so I'm not predicting any kind of switches here. And in comes the Sil Valley. Now, I don't know if he was expecting this or not. Um, but it's a good play either way. Uh, he goes for the multi-attack, and this is what I was fearing. Can't really tell what, I mean, I haven't played any Gen 7 Wi-Fi. I don't know how to tell apart the, uh, Silvalli typings. And I half thought when I saw it in his team preview that it may very well be Fairy. Otherwise, he hasn't got a good answer to Gudra. Now, I do get the poison, which is really nice, actually, because it kind of forced him to reveal what Seti is. He's actually a sleep, uh, sorry, a rest sleep talk Silvalli. Um, he's obviously the fairy or the fairy memory because it made his uh, multi-type attack uh, into fairy. Um, so I know that's his item. If I could have maybe knocked this off with Beedrill, I could have potentially brought this uh, Beedrill in on this uh, thing quite safely. So I do resist the stab, but Beedrill doesn't have the best defense. So I would have been playing with hacks, and I decided to play with hacks anyway here with Gudra. Uh, he, I, all I've got to do is hope he doesn't get multi-attack or whatever it's called. Um, for two turns. So he does uh, get the Sleep Talk Rest combo uh, again. So now all I need him to do is get it once again or switch out just so he stays asleep. He does stay in, he does go for the Sleep Talk and he pulls another multi-attack which is really frustrating because if I'd have killed this thing, um, 
it would have been one less switch into Infernape. It kind of forces me to bring it in a bit earlier. Uh, there's lots of things I could bring in, uh, mainly Beedrill to be honest, but uh, it might have been a better decision at this point. But I'm going to bring in Infernape because he literally has like no switch-ins other than Latios. Here I'm meant to click the Z-Crystal. Um, uh, all up humbling from close combat does uh, over 50% if he's not invested. Um, normal close combat does about 25%, which is very nice, I can't argue that, but it, it doesn't matter too much. Um, I mean, it might have helped a little bit in the future of the battle. Uh, I'm not going to stay in anyway. I don't have U-turn or knockoff, so I can't really hit this thing. Um, he goes for the Psyshock. I played with my Gastrodon so poorly this match. Um, I think it's just rustiness at this point. Psyshock does a ton. I'm specially defensive. This thing was here for Heliodisc. Uh, I shouldn't have played with it as I did. I should know by now that my switch in is the uh, Tokus, which I now do switch in, which uh, is what I should have done last turn. Oh no, I don't even do that. I've switched into Crosma. I didn't switch into Crosma the first time because I didn't know if he had Draco Meteor. Um, I am max HP on this thing, but I'm not defensive. I am offensive, so um, I didn't really want to try and switch this thing in. I'm Life Orb, so I've got to preserve as much health as I can. I haven't got any recovery on me, so. Um, I've got to be careful with a Crosma, but this thing can do a lot of damage. I do have the Dark Pulse. This thing doesn't get Shadow Ball, but hey, Dark Pulse and Shadow Ball do the same thing. It does a ton of damage. Um, revealing to me that he is actually a bulky kind of set, and it turns out he actually had Soldier, which I completely forgot we allowed this season. So um, He hasn't really got a safe switch into this thing. Uh, most of his team gets two hit KO'd. He could have switched into Helios and would have taken an attack, but I haven't revealed that I have Earthquake yet. I am modest with Life Orb, and uh, without uh, Grassy Terrain, Earthquake would have taken out the um, Heatran with any prior sort of damage, so that was kind of the planning behind having Earthquake on this thing. Um, but he does actually uh, die to a Dark Pulse and Psychic like Combo on the Ninetales, so we are 5-5 five, five at this point. Uh, Gujra's down, and Ninetales is down. I'm down to half. Moonlight would have been really nice, because obviously I do get um, the extra health recovery uh, in the sun. But um, in comes Heliolisk, and I'm... I'm 100% this thing is going to be uh, solar power. I have to sack off Gastrodon. The thing that was designed to try and take this thing on, obviously it gets, uh, I think it gets solar beam. It gets grass knot at least, which would have taken this thing on, but it's the best I had on my squad other than uh, Electivire. So reveals he is solar power. Um, at this point, I'm fearing the Scarf. I have to bring in Winston. I have the Mac Punch, and it one-shots this thing unless it's got Chuckleberry. Um, so I am going to uh, click it because it's my set. It's, it's what I have to do. I can't mess around with Helio skin because Infernape is so important to me now. Uh, in comes the, uh, what's it called, Sil Valley. Uh, Muck Punch is not going to be a 2 at KO. He's going to wake up on the next turn, so I have to click uh, Flare Blitz. I mean, I could have clicked Close Combat. Either way, I think that Latios is coming in next turn. I don't think any having any extra help would really, uh, health would really keep him phoning around much longer, so I don't think it matters I didn't click, uh, click Close Combat. I can't speak today. Um, so the Flare Blitz does take him out. So we're down to 4, uh, four at this point, so still very close. Um, but this thing is still around, and this is where... Um, actually clicking the Z close combat instead of normal close combat might have mattered because I think I might have been able to take this thing out with a Dark Pulse from Necrozma. And then obviously Infernape would have had much better time. Um, but, you know, Mercy is a free switch. Uh, he can't really do too much to me with Psyshock. Um, obviously the only thing here is that he has got Toxic, so I think in a 1v1 he would probably win. Although I could paralyze this thing and uh, obviously make it a bit easier for myself. Uh, however, I'm going to click Daz and Gleam because I've decided I just want to... I've had enough of this thing, I need to try and kill it. Um, he does roost up, and we are going to see that even after roosting, Dazzling Gleam is going to do a little bit more than the uh, the roost actually did. So, if I'd have got some kind of investment, or you know, maybe nasty plot on this thing, uh, could have maybe one v one this Latios a bit better. But hey, I'm doing more damage than he's recovering. Um, if he decides to attack me, he dies. So, in this current state, I will beat him. But I think you know, if we're both at max health, Latios should probably win. So. Um, in comes Smaug, the Heliolisk here. Uh, I knew this thing was going to... I didn't click Thunderwave because I was pretty confident this thing was going to come in. What I should have done is I should have switched into my Infernape. Um, just so I could obviously click the Mac Punch. But why would I bring Infernape in willingly against a Latio switch? Um, it turns out it's max speed. So it's a good job that I you know, didn't keep Infernape in against this thing. Uh, I haven't got a switch in at all. So I have to let Tokus go down. So at this point I have got Infernape. I have got... Uh, Necrozma, and I have got Mega Beedrill. And I know at this point he's, n uh, no, I don't actually know at this point he's not Choice Scarfed. Um, I have to bring in Mega B, because it outspeeds Latios. Uh, I know this thing's not Scarfed 100%, um, and I'm just going to have to click u turn. He's going to keep this thing around, because it does maybe switch into Infernape at this point. Um, 
Income has always got a very safe switch in. Uh, I actually click knockoff, sorry, because obviously it would have killed Latios and knockoff has sold you. Um, knockoff does a good amount of damage to this thing. Originally, I was going to be running Adamant Beedrill, but I had to run uh, Jolly in the end to try and outspeed some Scarfers, but Adamant Beedrill might have been quite nice in this battle. Um, I decided to hard switch there in case... I don't even know why I decided to hard switch there, to be honest. Um, the U-turn would have meant uh, I could do some extra damage. I'm going to go into Necrozma. Again, not entirely sure why. Dark Pulse will do a good amount of damage to this thing. I might have the Hidden Power Fire. I haven't revealed my fourth move yet, so uh, that might be why he switches that into Heliolisk. Um, I'm going to click Dark Pulse. If I had clicked Earthquake, or no, I actually have Autotomize on this set. If I had clicked Autotomize there, I would have been able to kill this thing with an Earthquake on the next turn. Um, not sure if it would have really helped in the long run, but obviously I'd have had my Necrozma a bit more health. I have to let this thing down, and turns out that his uh, Heliolisk is actually Solar Power Modest Choice Specs. What is a switch in? I mean, Hyper Voice, pr I, I don't have a resist other than Kartana, which, <laughs> you know, doesn't have any special defense. So, uh, at this point, uh, Inferno still looks like it could do something. Um, although, he has still got that Taurus, which is untouched. If I had got that Taurus in a bit earlier, uh, then I could have potentially got some more damage off from this thing. So, uh, I do get the Flare Blitz off. Obviously, it's going to destroy uh, the Sizzle. We know it's not a Kaberi. He was Rocky Helmet. Um, but, uh, I, I'm down to blow health now, and he has a Tauros left, which outspeeds me naturally, but it's going to be Scarfed, because obviously it beats Mega Beedrill, um, which I actually have in the back, so I can't really do too much here, I have to hope for a super duper Mega Crit Mac Punch, which doesn't happen. Sadly, uh, he has Body Slam, he doesn't have to worry about missing, uh, Rock Climb anymore, because Gen 1 is a thing, um, and he takes me out, and obviously he's going to outspeed my Mega Beedrill, which is a shame. Uh, and he, he is actually going to take out uh, Mega B and get the 3-0. Uh, it's a relatively close 3-0. Um, I will admit it's definitely not the best game I've ever played. Um, relatively hacks free, which was nice. Um, but I'm very rusty. Uh, team building was done earlier in the week. And I haven't done it in a while. Um, so yeah, they're my excuses. I say excuses. Jack completely out-prepped and out-played me that choice specs. Uh, Heliolisk, I should have known how much of a threat it would have been. Um... Because it's a Heliolisk. I, I've used it so many times. But uh, fair play. Uh, really good um, prep on his behalf. Because he probably knew I had to prep for the Bulu Heatran core. Um, I do obviously have Guja, Which is a really good answer to Bulu. Saying that choice banded superpower still does like 75%. So yeah. Um, good game Jack. I feel like it's definitely room for improvement. But the team is feeling quite good. Um... Hopefully next week we can get off to, uh, uh, you know, get our first win for the season. Uh, we are against Paulie Mack next se uh, week, I believe, who also suffered uh, a loss this week. Um, so we'll both be wanting to try and make, a, you know, a little bit of a bounce back. Um, but honestly, I hope, uh, well, it turns out the better Jack here did win uh, in the Jack Off as it was dubbed. So, um, yeah, I haven't really got much else to say. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like and a subscription and whatnot. Uh, make sure you check out the PPL um, Discord and YouTube and shop and Twitter below. And also, of course, we'll have Jack's links uh, for Twitter and YouTube in there too. Uh, otherwise, I can't really think of what else to say. Uh, I'll let you get on with your day. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week for week two against Paul. Bye.